This is the first video for the Pre-Calculus playlist following the text Pre-Calculus 11th edition by Ron Larson. This video covers section 1.1 of the text Rectangular Coordinates. This video is a quick review of the Rectangular Coordinate System. Let's begin by reviewing the Rectangular Coordinate System. So obviously we should be familiar with this already. Hopefully we all know there is an x-axis, there is a y-axis, there are four quadrants. This is the first quadrant, and then it just goes in counterclockwise order, and it is in Roman numerals. So one, two, three, four, and of course we know that the origin is right in the middle. The ordered pairs give us the x-coordinate followed by the y-coordinate, so the origin is at point zero, zero. Let's make sure we know how to plot points because obviously that will be important moving forward. So if we're plotting points, the point four, three would be four on the x-axis, so we would simply count one, two, three, four, and then three would be three on the y-axis, so one, two, three. So this would be my point and most people do this pretty well, but what I do see some students do is instead of putting a point there, they'll put A there. So just remember that we are plotting a point. If your point happens to have a label, you just simply put the label to the right, left, up, down, wherever. So B is negative 2, 1, so that would be negative 2 on the X and positive 1 on the Y, so that's in the second quadrant. C is negative 3, negative 5, again, we're going left and right first, up and down second, and of course that's in the third quadrant. And D is three, negative four, so this is point D in the fourth quadrant. One application of being able to plot points is translating points on a plane. So in this case, we're asked to translate the given figure, which is obviously a triangle, up four units and to the right three units. So there's a couple of ways to think about doing this. Obviously, we can just look at the picture. We can say, if the point starts at zero, zero, then I'm going to go one, two, three, four points up, and one, two, three points to the right, and that's where my new point is. So just for clarity, I'm going to call this A, B, and C. So this new point was the translation of point A, and in mathematics, we just call that A prime. Now, instead of just counting, I can also, of course, use mathematics. So four units up means the y-axis, remember these are x, y's, would be two and then four. So if I'm moving up four units, I would be adding four. And then to the right, three units, right is the positive direction, so I would be adding three. So just make sure you add in the correct order. So again, this was point B. So my new point B should be at 5 comma 8. So 5 comma 8 is right here, and that's B prime. And then of course, the same thing for C. C is at 3, negative 2. I can either just count, or again, I can take 3 plus 3 and negative 2 plus 4, which would give me 6 comma 2. So 6 comma 2 would be right here and that would be C prime and of course then my new figure should look exactly like the other figure just moved up and to the right. In this video we're going to review the distance formula. Let's take a look now at the distance formula starting with Pythagoras which is of course the Pythagorean theorem. So just to recall, hopefully we all know the Pythagorean theorem says in a right triangle, then we can take the leg squared plus the leg squared and the sum of those should equal the hypotenuse squared. So when I'm talking about legs, I'm talking about the two that make up the right angle. So on our figure, we could say this is A, this is B, this is C. So what we want to do is, first of all, we can very easily find the length of A and B to find the length of C. So 
on our figure, I can just count one, two, three, four, and I can count that because it's directly on my grid line. So A would be four squared, and B would be one, two, three, so we're gonna take three squared, and that's going to equal C squared. So 16 plus nine is C squared, that's 25 is C squared, and of course that means if I take the square root of each side, I get five equals C. So I can say that on my figure, this is four, this is three, and this is five. But the question is, how can we do that without having to draw the triangle? What if I just had the point two, seven, and five, three? So let's think about where these values came from. So if I wanted to find the value of four, essentially what I did was take seven minus three. So four was seven, minus three, which was essentially the y value minus the y value. And if I wanted to find three, I basically took five minus two. So three was five minus two, which was just subtracting the x values. And I actually did this one in the opposite order. This was actually x2 minus x1 to make it positive. But what we can see is using the same idea that we have from the Pythagorean theorem, which we're all very familiar with, we can just replace it with finding the difference of the y values and finding the difference of the x values. And it doesn't matter the order in which we subtract because we're going to end up squaring it, which is going to make it positive. So then, of course, we would take the square root at the end, just as we did in our example. So this is the distance formula, and we can use that distance formula um, without having to draw the triangle and make uh, use the Pythagorean theorem. We can just go straight to the distance formula. Let's take a look at another question involving the distance formula. And this question basically asks, is this a right triangle, yes or no? And we could say, well, it sure looks like one, but we can't know for sure without, of course, verifying it mathematically. So what I wanna do is I want to find the distance of each um, leg or each side of this triangle. So I'm going to call A, B, and C the three sides. So I'm assuming, I'm, I'm trying to determine is a squared plus b squared going to equal c squared? Because that would tell me that it is in fact a right triangle. So do I know the length of a? No, I don't. So I'm going to find the distance of a. And again, we're going to use the distance formula. So for the distance of a, I have to subtract the x value. So I'm going to take five minus one quantity squared. And then I'm going to subtract the y value. So eight minus zero quantity squared, which is the square root of five minus one is four, four squared, eight minus zero is, whoops, zero, eight squared. So that gives me the square root of 16 plus 64. So that is the square root of 80. Now, could I reduce that? Yes, I could. Would I turn it into a decimal? No, I wouldn't. I'm, for now, I'm going to leave this just like that. Now I'm going to do the same for B, so the distance of B. And B is one minus five quantity squared plus zero minus negative two quantity squared. And that gives me the square root of negative four squared plus two squared and that gives me the square root of 16 plus four. So that is the square root of 20. And again, I could write this as two square root of five. And if you don't know how to do that, that's okay. We'll be working on that. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as radical 20. And now for our last one, I'm looking at the distance of C. Now, I could I use the distance formula? Sure, but if you'll notice, it's right on a grid line, so I can just count if I want to. 
um, essentially I'm going from 8 to negative 2, so that's a distance of 10. So feel free to verify that with the distance formula, but I would just end up with the square root of 10 squared, which is 10. So have I answered the question? No, I have not. I've just done all of the work that leads up to answering the question. So now the question says, are these vertices of a right triangle? If it's a right triangle, it will work with the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So a, we decided, was radical 80. So I'm taking radical 80 squared. b was radical 20, radical 20 squared, and c was 10, so 10 squared. Now, what is the square root of 80 squared? Well, the square root and the squared cancel. So this is just 80. Radical 20 squared, again, those two will cancel, and it's just going to be 20. And then 10 squared, as we know, is 100. So 80 plus 20 is 100. 100 equals 100. Therefore, I have verified that triangle ABC is, in fact, a right triangle. In this video, we're going to take a look at the midpoint formula. Let's move on now to the midpoint formula. This is another formula, of course, using coordinates. So to find the midpoint of a line segment, essentially what we're doing, and I try to encourage you to just understand as opposed to memorize anything. So what we're doing is we're finding the average of the x value and the average of the y value, and that would give us the middle. So let's find the midpoint of the given segments. The midpoint, again, we can call this A and B and C just so that we are clear which one we're talking about. So if I'm trying to find the midpoint of A, I'm going to average the x values, which is 0 plus 2 divided by 2, and average the y values, which is 0 plus 4 divided by 2. So essentially I get 2 halves, 4 halves, which of course is just 1 comma 2. So if I plot the point 1 on the x value, 2 on the y value, that does appear to be the midpoint of the line segment. Let's repeat for b. So for b, I'm going to take 0 plus 3 divided by 2. I'm going to take 0 plus negative 2 divided by 2. That gives me 3 halves, negative 2 halves, which of course is 3 halves comma negative 1. So 3 halves would be 1 and a half, and then negative 1, that would be my midpoint of B. Let's do the last for uh, C. So for C, I'm going to take the x's, 2 plus 3. Again, I'm just finding those from my picture. 2 plus 3 divided by 2, and 4 plus negative 2 divided by 2. 2 plus 3 is 5 halves, 4 plus negative 2 is 2 halves. That gives me 5 halves comma 1, and so 5 halves is the same as three. Uh, sorry, 2 and a half, and then comma 1. That would be the midpoint of segment C. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at graphs of equations.